Hi, Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise, AutoAppraise.com. I'm down in Detroit, Michigan this afternoon, week uh, before the 4th of July weekend, 2011. Came across a beautiful 1976 Eldorado convertible. Unbelievable survivor car. Thing's got 6,300 miles on it. I have a little bit of video action from earlier depicting the underbody of the car, but it was in the darker, in the darker garage warehouse there where the other Cadillacs are stored. Key buzzer works. Crazy enough, the original digital clock works. I don't know if you can get a look at that or not. Well, the car is darn near perfect. It's pretty hard to look at a car and not find something wrong with it, something that perhaps hasn't been tended to. I just finished up a three hour long inspection on the vehicle and I'm showing you some of the highlights. One of the ways that we look for mileage on a car and authenticate it or not, again, you can see 6333 on the clock. Besides the paperwork and the fact that the current owner's father bought the car with next to no miles on it when it was near brand new, the car just doesn't have any wear. No finger sweat on the switches. Edge of the brake pedal is just wonderful. I mean, no wear. No wear. No wear under the carpet at the edges. No real wear at the seat bolster. And anybody who's owned this white leather slash Naga hide slash leather, whatever they were using in 76. It wasn't necessarily pleather yet, but you know how hard it is to clean and keep nice and keep from yellowing. No arm sweat noted on the armrest, no cracks. Typically you get these little cracks right in here on the edges where the window switches roll in and no, not on this car. Here's some of the original plastic covering that was still used to cover the front seats rather. Seat backs are of course beautiful. They're not nicked up or scarred because it doesn't look like anybody ever really even sat in the back seat. And take a look at this seat belt, driver's seat belt. You'll see it's got the original uh, GM date code on it, but obvious lack of usage on that chrome going in and out unless he was this kind of a dangerous guy and liked to roll without his seat belt on, which he could have been. The burl wood on this dash, again, gorgeous. Original uh, AM FM 8 track power trunk release and power pull down in the trunk both operating If you take a look at the little lights mounted above the seat in the back Well, it's too hard to see them out here, but they're operating as well all the turn signals work horn works six-way power seats work on both sides Haven't taken it for a drive yet But uh, this is a very tight motor These doors, I want to, I guess, remark it. Close these doors again. I'm going to just let go of this door and let it do its own thing. That door closes like it's never been opened. No hinge pin sag whatsoever. Oh, I need uh, a little help lifting that hood today. I'm not feeling it. Original 500 cubic inch motor. Front wheel drive trans. We took a picture. I got about 350 still photos of this car. But some of the neat stuff, sorry for all the wind. Some of the neat stuff, you see the original paper tags on the lines in the master cylinder. Original chalk mark on top of the wiper motor, on top of the cruise control motor. Original chalk marks on the inside, or crayon marks rather, on the inside of the hood. All around. Original stamp on the alternator. I could go on and on. Color, color striped vacuum hoses, original GM radiator hoses with original period clamps. Those actually have never been changed. Really wonderful running motor. The yellow paint daubs never even wore off the exhaust manifold if you can see those. That's pretty impressive. If that doesn't show you original miles, I don't know what does. The car was an original Firethorn Red. 
with a white leather interior. Okay, close your ears so I can drop this hood. Closes nice, doesn't it? All the chrome on the car is in really nice shape. The car is not without flaw. Got a small crease down here in the bumper strip. That's not going away anytime soon. This headlight's missing the spring to hold it back. It needs to be addressed. These extensions are in great shape for original extensions. The color's faded on them, which is common and normal. Original chrome's in real nice shape. Original grill's in real nice shape. Got some miscellaneous stains that may be able to be cleaned out of there. Got a little bit of a wheel through there and a little bit of a rub through on the top edge of this extension, but it's not cracked. Uh, I ran a paint gauge all the way around the car. You can see that in the still photos. But just to give you an idea, the mill thickness on the car is anywhere from 2.5 to 4, 4.5 all the way around. The car's got a couple small visible tiny nicks and flaws. It's got 6,000 miles on it, so it did get driven. Got a small scratch right in this area. But down the side, boy, it's beautiful. You can see there's really a little to no stone splash. We've got a small chip there and a little more major chip right here on that spot in the door. That is really the worst spot on the whole car. There's one very subtle door ding you're probably not going to be able to see in video, but it's right there. The paint's not broken on it. A handy guy could probably get that out with a, a little bit of time and attention with his ding tools. Ding tools. I don't know if that's what they're really called, but it's what they're called today. It's a beautiful, beautiful survivor car. Unbelievable. Original catalytic converter still in this thing. Gorgeous floors. Gorgeous underbody. A really, really well-preserved original Survivor car. We're going to take her for a ride. The air conditioning's not blowing cold. It does have the original Parade, the hard fiberglass uh, boot for the car. So we're going to take her for a ride and see how she runs. Jason from Auto Appraise, autoappraise.com, Detroit, Michigan. Just before the 4th of July, 2011. I keep saying that because I forgot what the date is today. I think it's the 27th of June. Let us know if we can do a car for you sometime.